uh, uh, James Noyes, and I wanted to take just a quick minute here to uh, introduce to you someone who I just recently got to know, uh, the composer of this next piece. Uh, last September, uh, David Dempsey, uh, uh, who is the director of jazz studies here and also director of the jazz archives, uh, invited me to come over to the archives to see what was there and you can ask him all about it, there's a lot. And uh, one of the things that's there is a saxophone quartet archive uh, donated generously by um, da David's friend and colleague, um, Al Regney. And some of that music has been performed uh, thus far over the past two years. Um, we open the file, and here is a piece by Edgar David Grana. I, I'd never heard of him. And then uh, David mentioned to me, uh, well, he was Michael Brecker's uh, theory and uh, uh, um, composition teacher. And I said, well, I think we need to get that piece out then. And uh, uh, so we got it out. And uh, the guys have been working on it uh, very diligently. And, and uh, we, we sort of got the idea that maybe the piece hadn't ever been played before. I felt like this was a major work. And uh, um, I said, uh, about six weeks ago, I said, OK, guys, I'm going to contact Edgar Grana. And here we have Edgar Grana. see Michael Brecker's composition books from there was my handwriting and it was very touched. Michael was very close to me from other places and um, I've taught probably some of the greatest horn players with David Sanborn and Michael Brecker and I always was a little shy to teach these men and having not written anything for the saxophone. So I constructed this saxophone quartet, and it was extremely painful to write. I had a crib sheet, because I could never remember the ranges. <laughs> <laughs> and in those days, I, my studio was on West 53rd Street, and it was a Colin studio, and it was really rather famous. Vacchiano was Miles Davis's teacher, and he would come and look at the scores, and, and uh, gosh, it was, just, it was magical. I had so many of the great jazz artists studied with me, in fact, my first composition teacher was Paul Hindemith, a student of Paul Hindemith in Nazi Germany. And John Coleman went on to be the rehearsal pianist for Balanchine and introduced La Faute de Lege and the Rite of Spring with Balanchine. So I have a lot of feeling for this. And George Marge was one of the great sessions players in New York City, practiced next to me. He played every woodwind, all the saxes, flutes, oboes. And he was a major doubler for commercials and film scores and Broadway so. And I was a wonderful man, and I wrote this for him. And uh, I kind of lost, I gave it to him, and I, I kept saying, well, George, do you like it? And he got off, he was dying. He got off his deathbed, he lived in Jersey, he came to New York, he handed me the score, and he said, I really love it, and he died that day. Wow. He went back to Jersey and died. And I was left with a sax quartet, and I sent it to the American, sa the American quartet, which was here. And I never met Al Rainey, and I said his name. Al Rainey. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and it went to sleep. What can I say? 28 years ago. And um, I've lived my life, I've done a lot of things, I have trophies, and that. <laughs> this, <laughs> and I've had some great failures and enormous neglect, like any of <laughs> give it away. You know? <laughs> and then I can't give it up. And so many of my students are dead. Michael's dead and Gronlich is dead. So many of the great jazz artists that I thought. Joey's all grown up now. Porterazzi. God, I thought. Lucy Simon, Carly Simon's sister. And on and on and on. You know. And, um, and I'm not living them all. It's so weird. I'm, you know, so. And um, I just had a great physical this morning, so I... <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this 
wonderful man has pulled me out. I'm literally in retirement. I'm a re I teach composition. I teach a school of visual I'm just alone. And this James has pulled me out. I, I really, you get like this after a while. I write and I look at my tomatoes. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, George, I am so thrilled, George, to know that wherever he is in the big piano bar in the sky, we'll get a chance to hear this, which was an enormous dedication. That being said, this piece is a slight abbreviation of the history of jazz. It starts off with a big band feel of Jimmy Lunsford, who had a magical big band for a while. Then the second movement moves into the kind of progressive jazz of Miles Davis. And I, I taught and knew many of the people, Michael Stern, Bob Berg, Munster, a lot of the people that work with Miles. And uh, I try to imitate Miles' kind of wonderful slurriness, but in the soprano sax. And then the last movement is homage to the Brecker Brothers strap hanging, mm -hmm. which is kind of that funk, intense, or you'll hear it, lots of rhythm, upbeat, it gets your attention. And I can't thank these gentlemen enough to, you know, it's one thing to write a piece of music. It's another thing to find musicians to interpret. This is a premiere, and what these gentlemen will do is if they will introduce this piece to the American audience, their style of playing will be heard. So if anyone else does it, it will be referenced to what they do. So it's extremely important, their effort because they're going to put their stamp on it forever. Because it'll go and it'll be recorded. So I can't thank them enough. Huh?